All right, so a while back I posted a video about how I was going to start modding this uh, Squire Affinity Jazz Bass. This is the four string model. and. These are the stock pickups that are in it, and I don't really care for them. I don't really care for how they sound. They have a really weak output, even with raising and lowering them and putting a preamp between them and the uh, the amp simulator that I'm using, which is Neural DSP's Parallax, which sounds great for all intent and purpose on every other bass. This one, however, just sounded really weak, and so I wanted to get a set of pickups that would really not have that same issue. So, enter the chat with the Seymour Duncan Quarter Pound. I got these used on Reverb, so, not too expensive and I've heard a lot of great things about them, but wanted to take it a step further and I got a new like replacement wiring jack for this as well. This is from a company called AMI Guitar Upgrades, a pretty cool company that I found also on Reverb. But if you see, there's actually a lot going on here. Uh, and the reason is, is that all of these switches allow this bass to do a lot of things that it wasn't able to do before, such as switch the pickups between running in series and in parallel, and I think six other variations here. So it's pretty cool. I do like the new concentric knob that's on here as well, because both of these little pieces here can spin. So I think we only have to go up from here. I mean, the, the bass tone you're about to hear, it doesn't sound great, but I want to preface this by saying that I'm going to record the before and after tones with the same exact tone. I'm not going to change any settings on parallax. I'm also going to use the same exact strings, which are fairly new. So that way we have as close to a control as we can possibly have. And that way you can kind of make a decision for yourself on what tone and what pickups you liked more. I'm pretty sure it's going to be a pretty clear and uh, cut and dry tone comparison here. Let's go ahead and dive into how it sounds with the stock pickups. You're going to hear a DI tone first. So it's just a naked DI, no uh, amp at all on it. Then I'm going to turn on the Neural DSP Parallax plugin, and I'm going to swap between a clean, like pop punk kind of tone, and then a distorted high, not high gain, but a distorted metal tone as well. So let's go ahead and jump in. All right, so as you heard, the stock pickups, they don't sound terrible, right? But they don't sound great, and it's actually a lot of work to get that tone out of them. So that's one of the main reasons why I've wanted to swap these out. Uh, it's, it's really tough to get enough output out of them to drive the amp sims the way that I want it to. And I've tried multiple different amp sims and wasn't able to get the same result out of any of them or get a result that I actually want or liked. So that's why I actually haven't used this bass on any of the songs that I've recorded or released yet, just because I haven't been able to get a sound out of it that I want yet. And of course, this was a $200 bass, mind you. I think I bought it used on reverb. It was like 180 plus shipping or something, so maybe a little bit over 200. And so I didn't spend a lot on it, and that's why it's a great mod platform, right? So yeah, that's where we're at with this so far. So if I'm going to replace the pickups today, let's dive in.
right, so thankfully that was easier than I thought it would be. I was able to put these in very quickly, as you'll see in that time lapse. They were pretty much just clip in wires. I did decide to solder together the grounds just so that way it's really solid and never comes loose. I'm not gonna gig with this anyways, but I just wanted to make sure they don't come loose. So lots of switches that you see here now. Um, I have it wired the way that their instructions say to, so I haven't yet figured out how it all works, but I know it sounds pretty sick. Uh, as you'll hear in the tone test that you're about to hear is a definite difference in output, which is pretty great because the tones that you heard from the stock pickups, I actually had to raise the input gain on my audio interface to compensate for the fact that there's such a low output. They weren't even hitting the amp sim the way that they should. So I think I added like 5 dB of input gain on my audio interface for the stock pickups. On this one, I turned the audio interface uh, input gain all the way to zero like you're supposed to do when you're plugging in a guitar or bass because it's going into the high Z input of an Audient ID 14 Mark II Something like that. So, but yeah, these went in super easily. Um, you'll see the comp the control plate fit like factory, which is great. And it's not chrome anymore, which I also love. It looks a little bit more stealth on this pink. Uh, I think this is pink. This is, I don't know. I don't know what color this is. Let me know in the comments what color you think this is. But yeah, everything fit perfectly. It fit like a glove. It was super easy to do. And I'm very thankful because I'm not the greatest at soldering. I actually just killed the uh, pickup selector switch on my GOC headless guitar because I got it too hot or something. I had to replace that myself and everything as well. But yeah, let's dive in and see how these sound though. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. <laughs> So as you heard, not only do they have a better output at zero uh, input gain, but they also have more clarity. And you heard that in the DI, but also in the clean and distorted tones, they sound better across all of those tones. I didn't change any settings either on Parallax. So all the same, no post-processing done, no EQ, uh, both on Parallax or inside of Logic Pro, left everything at noon basically. Um, so that way you could hear how this sounds just straight out of the plugin. Uh, I will do a later video with this being used in a demo song. I haven't gotten to that point yet. So but yeah, this is so far been a pretty fun and fruitful bass mod. I mean, you'll see right behind me over there, I do have the Dingwall five string bass and obviously that's at a whole different level of playability, of uh, build quality and everything. So it's a very, very well-built instrument. This is a cheap instrument. This was $200. The pickups, I think, were $49 I got them for on Reverb. Got them for super cheap. I got a great deal on it. And then these electronics actually costed more than the pickups did. Uh, I don't remember the exact price. I'll put it up on the video somewhere there so you all know. But yeah, if you guys like this kind of content, let me know because I love modding basses. I love modding guitars. I know this isn't really modding. This is just swapping out the pickups, but it worked out pretty well and I'm happy with the result and I can't wait to record with this. But the ding wall I tend to leave in drop G um, and it's a five string bass. So I don't tend to tune that back up to D or to E standard. So it's nice to have another bass now that's reliable and has a great tone and I can actually use it in recordings and have a usable DI signal so I can reamp later if I want to. But yeah, thanks for watching this far. If you made it this far, um, let me know what you thought about these tones in the comments. Did you like the original tone better? I really don't think most of you will, but let me know if you did and let me know what you would have done different if you would have done something different at all. Let me know what pickups you would have ordered, for instance. So peace, y'all.